I don't want to rain on this parade But I'm starting to question the love that was made I'm not looking for just an affair I want a love that is based on the truth, not just dare. I am Nikki Gilbert Daniels now, and I am um, from the group Brownstone. So if you know anything about 90s R&B um, and, and Michael Jackson, then you may have heard of Brownstone. I was signed to Michael Jackson who is the world's greatest entertainer. And um, I sang a lot of the songs that, sang lead on a lot of songs that the group did. Um, Maxie is another member. Kina is another member. Mimi is another member. Raquel is another member. Tisha is another member. And your mama might be a member of Brownstone too. If you dig deep enough, you might. No, I'm just kidding. Brownstone is an ever-changing entity. I'm a little chubby girl from Detroit with big dreams. Went on to meet Michael Jackson. I got a record deal. We were nominated for Grammys. We won Billboard Awards. A wonderful ride in the music industry. Then I started doing some television and film stuff. So I did like the movie Woo with Jada Pinkett and Tommy Davidson. I did um, a movie called Living Out Loud. I had a very small role in the movie Living Out Loud with Holly Hunter. I actually had a scene with Holly Hunter sitting on the stoop of a brownstone in New York. And that was Queen Latifah, Holly Hunter, Danny DeVito. I did Living Single with the Mari Twins. I did Martin. I played uh, Pam's cousin. I went on from that to doing plays with Tyler Perry. Um, I did the play Meet the Browns. I played, um, before I did the play with Tyler Perry, I actually did a play locally here in Atlanta, Will a Real Man Please Stand Up? That's a long title, but that was the title of the show. And um, at that play, I met, you know, it was one of the things when you're a budding young playwright and you're trying to get stuff cracking, sometimes the audience doesn't show up. And this particular time, you know, we did this play, Monifa was in this play, a couple other really amazing actors, Palmer, I don't know what Palmer's last name is, but I'm, you know, bad with names. So Palmer and Monifa, great cast, nobody showed up. The producer pulled us backstage and was like, look, ain't nobody here, you know, might have a hard time getting your check. If you still want to go out there and do your job, we'd appreciate it, you know, and if not, then, you know, I understand. I'm like, hey, I'm a trooper, I'm a thespian, thespian, that's associated with acting, not what you think. Um, I'm a thespian, so I figure, hey, what the hell, I go out there and I do my thing, and who's in the audience? Tyler Perry. So Tyler um, was like, I, I dig you. I think you're talented. And he brought me down to Atlanta and offered me a part in Meet the Browns. The original part was to play daughter-in-law. But then I like, you know, nailed that Vera part. If y'all saw it, y'all know I nailed that Vera part. Yes, I know. Okay, I'm tripping. But I nailed the Vera part. I loved it. It was one of the funniest characters I've ever played. Tremendous blessing. It got me really excited about theater. Um, I was a theater major in, in high school and went on to win a theater scholarship to Eastern Michigan University. So I got back to my theater roots, and I was very excited about being on stage. So I said to myself, you know, I'm going to do this for real. I saw how much money Tyler made, and I was like, mm, there's a lot of money behind the scenes. So I was on hiatus for music and decided what the heck write a play so I wrote before I wrote Soul Kittens and then I wrote a show called Sweet Potato Pie Sweet Potato Pie another great show sold out um, audiences Detroit like two three weeks sold out Boris Kojo Sherman Hemsley Terry J Vaughn my homegirl just an amazing cast of people that was the first play I ever wrote and uh directed and, and produced or whatever. And then Soul Kittens Cabaret, which is something that I had written and produced and worked on for about eight years. Gave all my money to it. Borrowed money to put on Soul Kittens Cabaret. Like, just like, this is going to be the biggest thing ever, and I don't care. I'm taking all my money out the bank, and I don't care where I sleep or what I eat, but I'm putting this show on. And, um, you know, a couple years after that, it was the biggest regret ever. But God has a way of making it happen, turned it around, and it was bigger than I ever could have imagined.
I had a bad relationship with music for a long time, or what I thought was a bad relationship with music. And now I'm just, over the years, have just gotten to a place where I said, you know what? I'm gonna use the gift that God gave me to not just tell my story, but hopefully tell a story that a lot of other women can identify with. Everybody identifies with this big mouth and this, these big lungs and, you know, me singing. So that's sort of where it all began. And I think that I owe it to people who appreciate my music, who appreciate good music, period, to give them great songs. And, you know, I'm starting to fall in love with music again. And ironically, my single, Falling in Love, is not necessarily about a man would be about music you never know but listen for that february 14th um i'm releasing it independently itunes best thing ever twitter best thing ever at nikki with two c's gilbert um at amanda under b underscore amanda renee b underscore amanda renee and of course y'all know size tv all that but yeah i'm working on a new record and i think that it's gonna be hot as a matter of fact i know that it's going to be hot because it's coming from my heart. This album, I think, is going to be called Introducing Nikki Gilbert because I think this is going to be the first time that people really get an understanding of who I am. I'm always Nikki from Brownstone or the chick from Brownstone or whatever, and I want people to understand and, and accept Nikki Gilbert. I'm a producer, a director, a love child, a wife, a sister, a friend, an insecure, overweight, big teeth. You know, but I love myself so much. And I, you know, want to share that through my music. Be honest with yourself. And surround yourself with people that will be honest with you. And if you don't really have what it takes to be an artist professionally, not just in terms of your talent, but in terms of your ability to persevere and stick with the BS and just give it everything you got, then do it as sort of a hobby or something that you enjoy, but don't make it a lifestyle. Because this business will chew you up and not spit you out. It will hawk you. Hack. Hawk. Like my grandma used to have a snuff cup on the side of her chair. That's what it is. Do quality performances, you know, quality product, work really hard, dedicate yourself, and leave a legacy that you can be proud of. And stop thinking so much about yourself. Think about the community. Like, my whole mission is about community. You want you want to be able to listen to a song like Marvin Gaye, What's Going On. You want to be able to listen to a Nina Simone. You want to listen. You, we can go back and listen to those artists, and they tell us stories of what was happening then. It was a contribution to our development, to us as a community. Um, what's up world? It's Nikki Gilbert. You're watching Size TV. I love you and I hope you love me and let's support Size TV. This is, I think. Isn't that what they say now? I'm so damn old school. Don't make no sense.